Welcome to this week's episode of the Rutledge Perspective. And y'all, I'm just so excited about Women's History Month. I don't even know what to do. And this group of women, you are, there are just no words. I cannot wait for you to meet all of them. And so what I'm going to do, just like I did for the last group, is I'm just going to tell you their name and I'm going to tell you what they do right now. And I encourage you, even if you're listening to the audio right now, I encourage you to go to the video on my website, laurelrutledge.com slash podcast, so that you can see them and see their beautiful faces. Um, And so we're going to be as facilitated as possible, um, given that we got a lot of stuff to talk about, but I want you to know who they are. So we've got Suzanne Anderson. And she is currently a senior strategic talent consultant for the National Tax Infrastructure Practice at Ernst & Young. And she's in Lexington, Kentucky. And then we have Tisa Hawkins, and she is a special education supervisor at Ector County Independent School District, which is where I grew up. And she's in Odessa, Texas. And then we have Angela Landrum, and she is a principal consultant for assessment systems at the Colorado Department of Education. And she is in Denver, Colorado. We have Leela Panagidis, and she is the CEO of Leap Into Leadership and also the newly appointed board president of Rapid Response Housing, and she is in Carlsbad, California. And then we have Veronique Shipley, and she is a commercial and residential real estate agent just launching her own business, VJS Holdings, and she is in Houston, Texas with me. Ladies, welcome! to the Rutledge Perspective. <laughs> no, no, I'm so excited. So guys, this, these ladies, I call this group of ladies, my fierce five. And when I turned 50, I knew I wanted to go to Jamaica and these were the women that I wanted to go with me. And when I set up the trip, I thought, who would I take? And there is a whole idea with these women's relationships in Women's History Month about common threads. And so Tisa and I have known each other since our mothers were pregnant. I met Veronique when I worked at Deloitte. And then I met Suzanne when I moved to Cincinnati. I've known Angela since I lived in Odessa because we went to high school together. And then I met Leela in grad school. And then talk about six degrees of separation. Tisa came to visit me in Cincinnati and met Suzanne. Leela came to visit me in Cincinnati and met Suzanne. Angela and Tisa already know each other. Veronique met Tisa. <laughs> so when I brought all these people together in, in Jamaica, I was like, this, these are the group of women that I want around me when I'm celebrating the 50th. And we're just going to show up as we are. When none of us have to be entertained. We're just going to have this great time. So what I want to start with is this. And I'm just going to go around so you guys will know who we're talking about. So I'm going to start with Angela. So Angela, what was your thought when I first said, hey, I'm going to Jamaica. You want to come? Just buy a flight. Um, My first thought was, oh, thank God I can get away. (laughs) (laughs) And I'll be honest with you. um, I was also a little nervous because um, at that point in my life, I had never done a girl's trip and I was worried. I'm like, oh God, I hope Laurel's friends like me. And (laughs) I was like, oh, thank goodness Tisa's going, you know? So, but it was really exciting. Very exciting. Yeah. I had a feeling because we know each other really well. And I was like, oh, but I know she's going to be great. I know she's going to be great. Lila, what about you? Oh my gosh, Laurel. When you said, well, first of all, when you said we're going to Jamaica, but then you sent the picture of where we were going <laughs> <laughs> and, and that it would be all ours to be together. And I was just thinking what a wonderful opportunity to meet new friends, to meet yeah. new people, to meet the people that you have been friends with, but I hadn't met all of them. Mm-hmm. And that you obviously had a common thread because there was something that either you put out to them or attracted them to you as a, as a, as a female friend that I knew they were all going to be amazing women because you surround yourself with amazing women. And I was just excited to get to know them and to learn more about them and just to be in this powerful group of female um, warriors. And, and it is, it is so powerful. It's so powerful. What about you, Sue? Well, wherever you ask me to go, I'm going to go. <laughs> you don't have to ever ask me twice. I'll pack my bag any, any time. But um, no, you know, similar to, to Leela, I, you know, you were so special, uh, Laurel. And so thinking about just all the friends that you've had through your life, I feel like, you know, 
one of us kind of represents every decade of your yes. life, really. And I wanted to be in the presence of the women that helped to shape who you are. So it was a treat. And it was just great to be with each one of you because we all had so many things in common, but we're all so yes. different. And it yes. was beautiful. It, so, was, it was amazing. It was it amazing. Was great. What about you, V? Well, when you asked, uh, first of all, I was humbled because I just thought it was just an awesome opportunity to get to spend mm -hmm. such a pivotal time in your life with you. Yeah. That was probably number one. And number two, getting to finally meet each of the names that you've talked about for yeah. years. I was yeah. really, really excited. And then you add Jamaica to it. That was really just the cherry on top. The rest yeah. of it was just getting to really meet because I know how intentional you are with your friendships. So yeah. I knew whomever you invited, it was going to be amazing. And it was. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, and I figured y'all were a little nervous, but I'm like, I know this is it. This is the group that I want. I know this group will work well together. Tisa, what about you? Well, I echo everything that has been said, and I don't ever want to take for granted our beautiful friendship. So I was not thinking that, oh my goodness, well, surely I'll go. No, it was a matter of, <laughs> I get to go, I get to go. <laughs> right. <laughs> so wonderful. And, yeah. and, and to have known, you know, all of the ladies and then to get to meet Leela was absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. And so it was, yeah, it was everything you all have said. And it was just so nice to see this beautiful tapestry of, uh, of uh, love and fierceness come together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it, it was so, what I loved about it. And when I thought about doing, you know, my 50th, I, what I love about each one of you is that I can just be who I am. I don't have to be anybody else. I can just be who I am. And so I knew if I said, Hey, we're going, I'm not planning nothing. The only thing we're planning is we can get a massage or something if you want it. And we'll do a special dinner for my birthday. The rest of the time, it's mm -hmm. just rest and relaxation and rejuvenation, right? And getting to know each other. And, and when I think about each of you, you know, Suzanne, I only know Suzanne because Suzanne and I met at church and then she was like, look, we're going to this church party. So I just need you to come and have a hot dog with me. Or, I, <laughs> you did not want to go. I didn't But mind. I got you there. <laughs> I did not want to go. And so, you know, the idea that each one of you just kind of, bring out the piece of me that I need to have brought out, even when I don't want to, you know, Leela, we were in Spain together, finishing up at our grad graduate degree. And I was not, I was learning Spanish and she was just so outgoing and knew what to do and knew what to say. And I'd never been out of the country. So to do that. And then Angie, man, that physics class, I, you know, <laughs> That wasn't really a physics class. It really wasn't. Physics, right? <laughs> it really wasn't. We didn't learn the thing, but we hung out, you know, and then V for us to meet at Deloitte. And it was that same thing. I'm like, I see this beautiful person. I'm like, I really didn't want to like you, but you know, yeah, I do. Right. And so when you guys think about how we came together, one of the things that happened, and I mentioned this as we were talking about how we we're going to do this is one of the things that happened while we were there was the uh, Supreme court nomination of um, Brett Kavanaugh was going on. And so we were in this lovely house with this amazing pool down in the, in the room with the TV, <laughs> like, eyes going to the TV. And that idea of all of us having this, this consternation about it. But to me, it was also a beautiful moment. I mean, what comes up for you, you know, and I'll start with you this time, Tisa, what comes up for you when you think about, about that, about having something so heavy, but being able to be together through that? What sticks out in my mind, I never will forget, uh, Suzanne was sitting next to me and she asked, y'all, do you mind if I go downstairs and watch because I just feel like she needs to be supported? Yes. And I thought, mm -hmm. let's go, you know, yeah. let's, you know, girl power, let's go down there and support her. So yeah. I, rem I remember that and us all just feeling this sense of, you know, just being women and just, just trying to send her vibes good vibes that we see you and we yes. hear you and we're with you mm -hmm. that's what I remember mm -hmm. yeah it, it was just it was incredible and I when I think about that whole day and that that whole trip you know what Leela what for you comes up about you know we think about these common threads and these strong women together what what really in terms of relationships and building those especially as we get older 
yeah. speaks to you about that trip that we had together. I was going to mention that because we were all around the same age mm-hmm. in terms of being generation Xers. And yeah. there's, we always seem to get skipped over. It's always boomers, millennials, and then Gen Z. I don't know what happens to generation X, but you know, we're, we're a powerful force to be reckoned with. But because we are now uh, older women <clears throat> on the, on the second chapter of our lives, right. um, it is a different dynamic. You know, if we're doing a girl's trip in our twenties, it's very different right. than a girl's trip in your fifties. Yeah. Um, and I think that maturity of life experience and being able to be raw and open with each other about yeah. aging yeah. and what does that happen? You know, with, with the physical aging and the relationships, the marriages, the children, the, mm-hmm. the jobs, all of us yeah. were going through transitions um, and we're, we're opening up being very transparent and I think vulnerable with one another. And I think that's very different at, at age 50 versus, you know, age 30 or even 20. Um, yeah. So I saw that dynamic kind of playing out of the, just the maturity of, of being this very powerful group of women in our midlives. Um, yeah. But just how much promise and potential we have. I mean, Laurel, you were just getting ready to leave yes. corporate America and start out on your own. And now look, you're still doing that. You know, V, you're starting your business. I mean, there's there's so much power in saying, you know, I have so much more to offer mm-hmm. and to give and to contribute and to yes. see all of us coming together and saying, what are we going to be doing in our next chapter? Oh, I love that. I love that. And and V in particular, I remember watching you at the table. So when we were, we had dinner together every night, we had breakfast, the, the best coffee I've had in my life. Ever. Oh <laughs> my gosh. And the coconut water. I mean, it was just fabulous. So we had breakfast every day. We had all our meals together. And, and I remember Leela because she's Leela and she always knows what to do, brought these great conversation cards for us to do every night. And so I remember watching V with some of these questions and kind of the deep contemplation and, and we've known each other for a long time. And so tell me V, you know, almost along the lines of what Leela was saying too, but what came up for you as we were there and asking these really deep questions with, I guess, for all of you guys, people, you were really just starting to get to know. Mm -hmm. Well, several things, full transparency. I just told Laurel at breakfast yesterday about those cards that you brought and it changed. I don't know what would have, I think it would have been a wonderful time no matter what, Mm -hmm. but I really think the cards really caused us to open up and share. And it was, it was interesting because even though we're all very different, we all have so many common denominators that I think there was just an instant level of trust because of you being the person that kind of threaded us together. Mm -hmm. We automatically knew we were safe and we could be transparent and know that we weren't going to be judged. And I think that was paramount. Mm -hmm. I will say that I walked away from that trip. I I don't know what it will take to better that trip for me. Um, to top that trip sincerely, yeah. because to see women come together and lift each other up and support each other to that level and that magnitude, I'm still yeah. overwhelmed by it. I was humbled in all of your presence because all of you are just bosses on every level. And I wouldn't have started my new company had it not yeah. been for that trip in Jamaica. Yeah. Sincerely, I wouldn't have. Wow. Had it wow. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, and Ange, you know, I, I just remember because because we were talking, I mean, we talked about so much stuff and and I am pretty introverted, um, but Ange is really introverted. And so I thought, but I know her and Tisa's going to be here and she'll be fine. Um, but I remember at one point we were all, I think it was the second day, it may have been, and some of us were at a pool reading and some of us were in the pool and somebody was like inside and we were just all over and we all just kind of doing our thing. What for you, and really kind of connected you to the moment, even with that introversion? Because I'm there too. Well, it was the idea that we could all just be comfortable in that space and be ourselves, as we've mm-hmm. talked about here. Um, and there wasn't any sort of judgment going on there. Yeah. I didn't have to worry about whether or not the fact that I just wanted to sit there and enjoy the beautiful environment and read or just stare I stare a lot, which freaks people out. And so <laughs> it was really cool to be with some folks that, that were okay with the fact that I would just sit there and stare for a while. And, and um, it, 
I mean, you may have talked about highly back told me I was weird, but you know, um, <laughs> but no, I didn't feel that way at all. And, and it was really relaxing and I have a really hard time relaxing, um, you know, outside of, you know, my husband or my daughter. So, um, so it was, it was really special. Yes. And, and so you guys know who are listening, her daughter, who I just adore actually made t-shirts for all of us, which is awesome. I, I had my t-shirt on the other day that she made for us, uh, which was fantastic. Um, so Sue, for you, I, what I remember, I remember, and I have the picture, I have a picture of you in the pool and you are all the way on the other end looking over and you were just so peaceful, so peaceful. And I know it was a really weird time for you too. So what kind of came up for you in this, I'm in Jamaica. And so, yeah, I'm going to pack my bags and go, but I don't know these people. So what, what, what am I going to well. do? I love, I love meeting new people. So that's never an issue. I wasn't worried at all about that, but um, you know, it really was a very, and I, I would, I think we all felt this way too, but just it, because we were able to really connect with each other and those cards were Leela amazing because I think they were meant to be just a casual icebreaker to help us get to know each other yeah. and get the conversation started, but they really ended up being, um, you know, helped us start thinking about like legacy kind of stuff. And there's something about a milestone birthday that yes. really makes you start thinking about what do I want the rest of my life to look like? And mm-hmm. what do I want to be doing? And how do I want to do it? And who do I do it, want to do it with? And so, yeah. you know, it was an important, it, it was nice to be able to slow down. We all have mm-hmm. such busy lives. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was a, this was a trip that we took pre COVID. So life yeah. was even busier. Um, yeah. And to just have a minute to connect with each one of you in a really meaningful way in this quiet place where we can mm-hmm. just be um, mm-hmm. no distractions, no phone calls, mm-hmm. no checking your Instagram. I mean, yes. it was it was amazing. Um, and, and I think that was the difference maker. And I think talk, thinking about this whole the whole Brett Kavanaugh thing mm-hmm. and listening to her testimony Um, it was nice to be able to talk about how we felt about that in the presence of other women. We didn't all agree, you know, what it was happening there, but that was important too. And all of that trust that we built as, um, so quickly. So it, it was special, you know, but I I really think just the being able to focus on each other was, and have quiet. Yes. was really can I mention just something yes. Dan mentioned a word it was legacy and Laurel yeah. you did something that I think was the first time I've ever seen on any um, vacation trip or pleasure mm-hmm. trip was a give back day oh yeah. and you organized <clears throat> going to the orphanage and asked us beforehand to bring mm-hmm. books yeah um, and that is part of your DNA and part of what makes you such an amazing person is you're always thinking about how you can help other people and how you can give back. And the fact that you organized that as part of our itinerary was to think yeah. about how are we going to be giving to others and what is the legacy that you leave? It's just such a characteristic yeah. of who you are. Thank you. Yeah, I was, in fact, I was looking at pictures the other day and I was like, I need to, I need to remember, I forgot to send them something last year. I'm like, I need to remember to send them something else again. And, and they are definitely on the list because I am claiming 2023 ladies, yes. I am claiming yes. 2023 to block the calendars. <laughs> Um, yeah. but, you know, if you, if you think about that, cause, cause this is, again, this is women's history week. Right. And one of the challenges that we have, uh Oh, we lost somebody. Oh, Tisa, yeah. <clears throat> hopefully back. she'll come back. Oh, there she is. Yeah. We lost, uh, one of the things that is a challenge sometimes is that building these women's relationships and especially whether you are in nonprofit, whether you are in corporate, no matter what you do, there's all this drama around women and relationships. And you've got the ones that you start very early. You've got the ones that you build later. And, and so I'm doing this series because these groups of women that I have in my life are very, they're critical to me and to my well-being. But it's also, I think for me, indicative of the fact that there doesn't have to be madness. I mean, it doesn't have to be, you, you can lift each other up and be positive and be supportive and, and be there and develop even more relationships through the relationships you have. So if you think about where you are in your lives, how are you continuing to build, right? And nurture 
those relationships that maybe weren't the ones that were the very beginning, right? They're, they're more new relationships. How are you finding them? And how are you kind of nurturing and keeping those? I'll start with you, Ange. New relationships. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because from the point at which we returned from that trip, I started to see, especially women, you know, coworkers. Mm -hmm. um, um, I don't have a lot of social interactions locally, but mostly with my coworkers to, to see them as a little bit more human yeah. as opposed to these, these other bodies that I simply work with. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really helped me be a lot more um, focused on how whatever I say and whatever I do it impacts them. Yeah. So I am trying very hard now to understand the point of view of a lot of uh, people that I work with mm -hmm. and it allows me to be better at my job and to um, make some decisions that perhaps I wouldn't have made uh, before. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I think that this turning, this kind of turning point that we're at, and maybe it's a maturity thing, maybe it's mm -hmm. a self-confidence thing, but I just feel like I've had a lot more opportunity over the past couple of years to really consider the way in which um, my words and my actions yeah. uh, impact people and um, how I might in turn support them rather than, um, you know, be oblivious to that. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that, that may sound like something that comes really easily to a lot of people, but that's that's not really where I've been and in, in, right. you know where I've come from. So it's it, it's been it's been really interesting and very gratifying actually. People are people can be really nice. Yeah, they can. <laughs> they really can. <laughs> Angie Crack. It's lovely. No, it is, it's <laughs> lovely. So <laughs> what about you, V? Um, well, I've always been someone people it's so funny you can never judge a book because people think I'm super outgoing, but yeah. interestingly, I'm not. So I would rather be the director than the star of the film. So right. I, I'm much more comfortable kind of, even though I danced in, in front of a lens, I love to teach more than I love to dance. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, and I also lived by philosophy for a long time. I'd rather have four quarters than a hundred pennies. Right. I'm good with just a tight knit group of people. Mm -hmm. um, but it also reminded me of a scripture that I love that says entertain strangers. They could be angels in disguise. Yes. So just piggybacking on what Angela just said, everyone has a story, everyone. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I love after our trip, I just love just hearing where everyone was in their life and what yeah. they were experiencing. And I knew that whatever, it's kind of like what stays in Vegas, happens in Vegas, stays there. Mm -hmm. I knew what happened in that house in Jamaica was staying there. Mm -hmm. And so I just think it's made me, as Angela said too, kind of humanize women mm -hmm. more that there's so much that we don't share just as women. Right. There's sometimes we don't wanna show a weakness or we don't wanna show just whatever the case may be. But it just helped me understand that everyone has a story and everyone yeah. wants to be seen. So yeah, I love up. that. I love that. Tisa, what about you? Well, again, I totally agree. I'm I'm the extrovert of the group. Yeah. <laughs> you and Suzanne. And the comedian. <laughs> Hold them down the fort. For all so, I, I love being with people and enjoying that. I love meeting new people. So when you say new relationships, I, I look forward to that because I also... Um, in a selfish kind of way, look forward to what I'm going to learn from someone else. Yeah. And just being with all of you during that time, I mean, it was just like soaking up so much. There's just so many things that I, that I learned with being with you all that I still think about it and, 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 and use even today. I still have the picture of my office. That's yeah. just where I like to have it because I like to think about trying yes. to yeah, Lisa's you know. got hers behind her. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I just so when I meet new people, I like to make sure that you know they're good, they're in a good place, and if mm -hmm. I can be of help to them, great. I also yeah. want to see what we can do to grow, you know, together. It doesn't always work out. There are some mm -hmm. people that you know you can 
really get to know very closely. And there are some that just need to be acquaintances and, and, and that's fine. And uh, everybody has their place and there's nothing right. wrong with that. And right. uh, so, but I, uh, I try to learn something from all of it because like mm-hmm. you all are saying, everybody wants to be seen, everybody wants to be valued. So just yes. because they're not a close friend or become more than an acquaintance still doesn't mean that I need to uh, not value them and, right. uh, and not know that they um, need to be heard and seen. So right. I do enjoy new relationships for what I can get and then in turn, hopefully what I can impart to them. I love that. Well, and Sue, I mean, I would have I would have never left my condo in Cincinnati if it wasn't for Cincinnati. <laughs> going, Look, here's where we're going, right? <laughs> Well, and to be honest, I needed somebody to go to all these places right. I wanted to go to. So I'm a good plus a one. Easy target. Yeah, right. Exactly. I'm glad I found you. But, right. you know, I was going to say that, you know, one thing that we discovered, I keep talking about COVID, but it, it yeah. is such a, it has been such a strange time. Yes. Um, yes. But a lifeline for me and something that I still laugh about is a few of us found this Marco Polo yes. uh, where you could send videos to each other. and. Yeah. I want to tell you that just getting, you know, making a video for y'all saying, I cleaned my oven today, (laughs) y'all. Whatever the dumb thing was, or I just watched nine episodes of whatever dumb show. Um, It it was wonderful to have somebody to just share the monotony of those early days of of the pandemic. Um, Mm -hmm. And I was going to say, I actually surprisingly, um, and I, I found it harder to make friends as I get older and mm. I have a nine-year-old. So, you know, oh, yeah. I try to make mom friends, but yeah. you know, that's not always easy uh, yeah. to do. And so, but it was, it's funny. I have gotten to be really close with a couple of my neighbors. Mm. Um, and it was something as simple as seeing somebody in the street and saying, do you want to just go stand in my yard and talk for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And it was really Develop into these like really close yeah. female yeah. friendships where we know yeah. that we can count on each other and our kids mm-hmm. are comfortable together and our husbands have become friends and yeah really those friendships would have never happened had we not been confined right <laughs> so what and um right. it's been really it's been really nice to mm-hmm. to add to that that network of of people yeah. in our lives yeah. you never know you know everybody they're gonna show up yes yeah, you know everybody. Every time I see a picture, I'm like, "Yep, I remember them. I think I went to something and I saw these people." Right? <laughs> like, you get out like I remember I the face. But... So you overestimate my <laughs> my life these days. But, but yeah, <laughs> Lila, what about you? Well, I'm so surprised. After the trip, I thought for sure that our message group would have disappeared. Yeah. And after how many years, three years going on, four, yeah. we are yeah. still texting each other. We have a text yeah. group. I wish you all had all iPhones so we could iMessage. Right? You, know, <laughs> you know who you are, <laughs> but <laughs> we might want to move over to WhatsApp, but that's okay. Right? Um, so, so the fact that we're just, we're, and it, it could be like two months go by and then someone yes. sends a joke or mm-hmm. did you see this or, yes. and then we'll, we'll back and forth, bing, 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 bing for a while. And, you know, it could be profound things. It could be sad things. Um, it could be, you know, someone's relative uh, in this mm-hmm. group is, is struggling. Mm-hmm. We need to support that person. Um, and I'm just, I'm just amazed at that happening. And it just, and, you know, who knows how long this little chat right. is going to go on. To, you know? yes, so, I think it's going to last. I think it's going to last. Yeah, and just birthdays. And, and so yeah. it's, it's just a, a phenomenon. It's just, again, um, Laurel, you're the catalyst. You're, you're the hub, of the, the spoke of the wheel, right, with, with bringing all of us together for this. And, um, you know, it's great. We went to Jamaica and I think Oprah said something like lots of people want to ride the limo with you, but yes. when it breaks down, you want people who are going to take the bus with you. Right. Yes. <laughs> so, so, so even though we were in Jamaica, I mean, if, if, if we couldn't go to Jamaica and we need just to go to, you know, wherever to exactly. get, make it happen or on a zoom, you know, yeah. it doesn't matter, um, uh, what, what the location is. It's not the, yeah. not the, that's not the place. It's the people. Yeah. Right. Exactly. That make it. So yeah. I, I love that. Yeah. Well, and I love that, I, you know, that there are times when like, well, I'll go to breakfast or something with me or I'll talk to, to, to Tisa or something like, yeah, I was talking to Lila or I talked to Suzanne. I'm like, I didn't see that message. She's like, well, I wasn't talking to you. I was, I was talking to them. I'm like, ah, 
okay. So, you know, I just really love for me, it just makes my heart so happy that you guys, despite me, have been able to make those connections and keep those connections too, because that to me is what what is what friendship is what love is what support is what kindness and compassion is right it's really about being able to make those connections deeper and know that you got someone else that you can call right someone you can text someone you can reach out to and you know that it is a safe space it's a space of no judgment right it's a space where you can just be and and i think we get we as women can get such a bad rap and we do see you know the housewives of whatever and you just see all the madness and, and especially as you get older, it's like there was golden girls, but other than that, w- what was there? Right. And so that idea that it really is real to have relationships that are both professional, but very personal and very connected and very deep that have deep roots and common themes, right. And common connections that enable us to then take that learning and go somewhere else. Cause I got to tell you, I wouldn't still be doing this if it wasn't for all of you, because I know I have called all of you multiple times and said, well, I, maybe I just need to go get a job. <laughs> right? Maybe I just need to go get a job because this is just insane. And to a person, you guys have always been so supportive and you show up and you do things. And that is, that is not something you can buy, right? That is not something you can buy. The people in your life, come into your life for a reason, a season or a lifetime. And I truly believe that, that these are lifetime relationships. They really are. And, and you're right, Suzanne, it's been every decade, right? I'll, each of you guys represent a decade for me. And it's been, it has just been amazing. So, so as we, as we close, I'm going to give each one of you kind of a couple of minutes. So I'm trying to think of who to start with, who thinks fastest on their feet, maybe V. I don't know. <laughs> but I just want you to for a couple of minutes, right? And just say as we as we end, what for you, if you think about Women's History Week and, and what we can do to continue to support and uplift each other and the relationships and the things we need to do, especially since women and our agency is under attack at this moment, what comes up for you as a really great piece of either advice you'd give or something you own that you'd live by that really says, you know, no, we're going to step into our power. Now we, it is our time. We're going to show up and um, we are going to be the bosses that we already are. We're not going to wait for somebody else to tell us we can be, we are just going to assume that space. So what is the kind of the, your ending mantra for this, for this episode? Um, Mine would be that, um, and I, I will be full transparency. Mm-hmm. I am not someone who has always walked around believing in myself and thinking that I'm empowered, I can do anything. Um, that's come through. Honestly, I didn't really, and I know I'm not, I'm not just saying this just because of this podcast. Mm-hmm. I'm saying it because it's the truth. After I left Jamaica, I felt like, man, these ladies who are so elevated, believe in me and just met me like it almost makes me emotional like I was overwhelmed and then reading that beautiful journal that Tisa gave each of us and took the time out to write like an intentional note that was just personal just for a thank you (laughs) and write in it and it it was just so special from beginning to end from you greeting us at the door and that time just to see women be able to get be together there's no competition Mm -hmm. there's no envy there's no anything and just literally want the best for every single person. Even when I sent you guys the logo to get your opinion, several, I think everyone sent me a a message just saying how excited they were for me. And really the time that you took out of your busy schedules, I just have no words. There is, I built a vision board. Um, I sat on my floor for hours and hours and hours and built a vision board for myself. And one half of the board is about women empowerment Mm -hmm. and empowering my just speaking positivity over myself. And there's a scripture in the Bible that I put in the middle of the board and it shows a kitten looking at his reflection and the reflection is a lion. And so just as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So just, if I had to leave anything to any person, it's you are what you think you are. 
-hmm. and our minds are powerful mm -hmm. and they're, they're good and they can be bad. What we think of ourselves, we, as women, we tend to lessen ourselves or mm -hmm. dim our own light and to be in a group that we can, in, you know, shine the light, like literally in each other's face is, mm -hmm. is phenomenal. And so I think that would be, if I had to impart anything is as you think you are, that's what you are. And so mm -hmm. just being intentional, I would tell any woman, be intentional about what you think of yourself. I love that. I love that. And I often think if I had to provide some, I don't want to say advice. I, no one should ever ask me for advice, but <laughs> I do, I do have a, I do have an almost 28 year old daughter yeah. and uh, she's at that age now where she's, um, she actually thinks that I have some things that, to say that are important yeah. and might actually be right <laughs> yeah, from right. time to time. Right. Um, but you know, um, on, in this particular area, um, there's a, there's a quote by Christine Hassler. I'm not sure if you're familiar with her that I really like, and it's actually not too dissimilar to what he was talking about, but it says we don't often realize the things that come so naturally to us are gifts that God mm. puts our gifts so close to us. So they're easy to find, but it's often the last place we look. Mm, and so good. I really like that mm. because it makes me want to always remind, you know, my daughter that, you know, she needs to rely on the things deep inside herself that she knows are right. And yes. If I spent less time second guessing myself mm -hmm. um, for most of my life, I think I'd be in a different place, but yeah. that's okay. You know, it is yeah. what it is, but I, I, you know, you always want, especially your kids, uh, your, I have a child to, yeah. to not suffer the same way you did They're yes. gonna suffer in their different <laughs> ways. Right. Yes. But, um, but if I had one thing that I would want to say, um, not just to my child, but you know, to, to anyone who thinks that whatever they do or say is not valid. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to remind them that everyone has gifts. Yeah. And if you don't see them, yeah. you need to look a little closer to yourself. Oh, I love that. I love mm. that. Sue? You know, I feel like something that's just become really clear to me mm -hmm. in the last couple of years is just be yourself. And you hear it all the time, but it's mm -hmm. hard sometimes to feel like you could walk into a room and just be accepted. Yeah. You know, I think all women can say that we all just try to show up for whatever circumstance we're in and project right. a certain image or, you know, whatever it may be. But there's something just so wonderful <laughs> about <laughs> breathing and, you know, yeah. take just being you yes. and appreciating yeah. who you are and what you're about and being knowing that you know it, it I love what V said I'd rather have four quarters than a hundred pennies yeah what those four quarters think you know I mean it mm -hmm. and how you feel about you um yeah. and so and I, I think also another theme that I kind of heard in our our talk tonight is just, we need to listen to each other. Um, yes. Nobody knows what the other person's journey is. And I think mm -hmm. it's so easy to just assume um, mm -hmm. that we understand what somebody's going through mm -hmm. or what things they have going on in their lives. And so I think, you know, to listen to, to people mm -hmm. with intent um, yeah. and just show up as your authentic I self. I as love much that. As yeah. 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 Intention is so important. Leela? I think we're at such a <laughs> consequential moment of our country, mm -hmm. of what's going on uh, in terms of attacks on rights, yeah. on human rights, on women's rights, voting rights. Um, mm -hmm. And as women, if you look over the history of humanity, mm -hmm. it's women that have been really leading those uh, pushes yeah. uh, to, to push uh, toward social justice, to push mm -hmm. justice and equality. Women have to count on each other uh, to lead these, to band together, whether it's uh, gun uh, violence, whether it's um, voting, uh, reproductive rights. And it's so interesting to see this time that we're on right now, which is yeah. so profound, but it's scary because we yeah. can't take it uh, for granted. And we can't take for granted our friendships either because yeah. they also uh, can, can go. And so you have to nourish them just as seeds in the garden. Mm -hmm. um, and there has to be some connection. They had Rebecca Traster, who's, who's a wonderful columnist, talks about 
friendship, female friendships have been the bedrock of women's lives for as long as there've been women. Yes. And when the men were all fighting or, <laughs> or doing something, you know, yes. the women came together and for so long, women were shut out from decision-making, from leading countries, from being part of the government government systems. And so women right. have had to come together and rely on one another to take care of kids, to be together. Yeah. Um, if, if their if a spouse died, that they were there to support each other. Women right. are the caregivers. We take care of our parents and our children and our friends. And so we look to one another for support um, when there is when there's really no one there. And so I think having that um, perspective of being a, in a female friendship is very different than even, you know, I, I love my husband. I have a happy marriage, <laughs> but, you know, it's not enough. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, need, I need my girlfriends, too, you know, yeah. um, because it really rounds out my life. And mm-hmm. you and all of my female friends are such a critical part of that tapestry Um, that's so important. It's not more or less than, but it's so essential to having a joyful and and happy and and meaningful life. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. I love that as well. And Tisa. Well, I think what resonates with me is what we are doing here Mm. is, is what we need to do for women. I mean, the way we are connecting, the way that we are being real, I sit here and I'm thinking about, I wish my 20 year old self Uh, have a little bird's eye view of what I'm seeing here in that, um, you know, it's, you're going to evolve, you're going to change. I think that's just part of, you know, that's just, just, just part of the developmental, you know, process that you're not supposed to know things, you know, in your twenties that you're going to know in your fifties. That's what's what life is. That's what experiences Mm -hmm. bring to you. And Mm -hmm. so if you're blessed to live long enough to ebb and flow through this life and meet beautiful and wonderful people like yourselves, that just builds us and edifies us as we, as we continue to go through this life. And it is just a, it's, it's amazing when we get here. I think that is why we can say what we you know, want to say, it's like we, we sit yeah. up straight, we stick that chest out, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I'm a woman, you know, yes. I, I am a woman and the shoulders have been stood on and I have stood on shoulders and we, the, we are a force to be reckoned with. Yes. We are a force to be reckoned with. And uh, one of my quotes, and it's just Dr. Angela, she's just mm-hmm. so phenomenal to me, yeah. and, you know, the phenomenal woman. But, that, but I just love the part about do the best you can until you know better. Yes. And then when you know better, you do, do better. better. Yes. And that's with, you know, with women putting us in places where we're supposed to be, mm-hmm. we should know better by now. Yeah. When we can, we can lead, we can be yes. the bosses, we, we can do those things. We are doing those things. Yes. Some people are a little slow, but we are, do- <laughs> we are doing those things. <laughs> they don't quite get it yet. They're a little slow, but um, yeah. yeah, just that, that, that word fierce just, just really comes through when it, when I think about women and what we're doing to empower yeah. each other and to, to educate each other just on mm-hmm. uh, our different life journeys. Yes is, is, is amazing. And uh, this is, this is what being a woman should be. We should yes. see each other and check on each other. Yes. We should really, really make sure we are okay because we yes. are so good at just saying, Oh, I'm fine. No, I'm handling it just mm-hmm. fine. Just mm-hmm. like you yes. all said, you're, you're, you're the wife, you're the mother, you're the caregiver, you're all of that. But are you really okay? Yeah. Put your mask okay on first. Say that you're not. That's right. It's okay mm-hmm. to say that you're not. Yeah, it's okay yeah. to say that you're not. So, now, Laura, just, we have to ask you the question too. I love it. You know, <laughs> yes. yeah, you know, I um, I was just sitting here as I was, as I was listening to all of your answers, and and the first thing that came to me is I'm like, you know what? This is why these are my fierce five. This is why, is because I am so um, uplifted and emboldened and just. My, my heart and my spirit just soars when I see all of you and when I talk to you, because not only is there intellectual challenge, because y'all know I get irritated. So it's, it's that intellectual challenge that I love, but there's also just an ability to laugh and be silly and let go and be real and be vulnerable. That is what makes you a boss. You're not a boss because you're perfect. 
Mm. boss because you're real. Mm -hmm. And so to have the five of you, um, I would say to anyone, find your village. I mean, I know, you know, some people find your tribe, whatever thing works for you, find your village and, and be sure that the people that are there are people that truly are a connection that is a relationship not just an acquaintance. You need some acquaintances, but the people that are in your village, I mean, really in your village, those are people that you know you can call on. Those are people that you know who are also gonna tell you the truth, right? You want people who are gonna tell you the truth with, as B says, with L-O-V-E. <laughs> so I, I really, when I think of what I wanna tell people is find, find your fierce five. Find your you know friends for life. Find your you know, whatever your sister circle is and, and nurture it and lean into it and stand on it. Right. And support it because that is the strength that we need. Because as they say, you know, you educate a guy, you support a family, you educate a woman, you support an entire village. And Mm -hmm. so as we continue to uplift each other and we continue to support, I just, I just know that there's nothing that we can't do. I just, I just know that. So I am just so thankful that all of you agreed to do this because I was like, guess what I'm doing? So <laughs> I am so glad that you all agreed to do this. Leela and Ange and Sue and V and Tisa, I am um, beyond honored and humble that you were willing to be on my little baby podcast. Um, mm-hmm. I am so thankful that you were here. Thank you all for spending this time with me. And for those of you, again, if you're listening audio, um, I encourage you one, thank you. Thank you for downloading. But I also encourage you to go and pull down the video, go watch that. And we're going to have a surprise for you in a couple of weeks. Stay tuned for an announcement um, for all of the women's history uh, podcast episodes. So thank you so much for tuning in this week. I truly appreciate it. And we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. You. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. <laughs> Before you go, I am thrilled to announce the launch of the Rutledge Perspective Live Conversations on Fireside. This is going to be amazing. It is an opportunity for me to meet you and for you guys to meet me and literally have conversations real time. So live audio and video on Fireside. So these are going to be happening beginning Women's History Month on Thursday, March the 3rd at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. So the show is probably going to be on every Thursday, but definitely every Thursday during the month of March, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And for Women's History Month, you're going to get to meet the women who are part of my village that I'm doing the podcast with for Women's History Month. But during the run of the show, I'll be doing some live coaching with people who want to be coached. We'll be talking about those meaty topics that I talk about on the radio show and on the podcast. It's going to be a lot of fun. So you get a chance to talk to me, get on the stage, live video, live audio. It's going to be fantastic. And I would love to have you there. So go to my Instagram page, the.rutledge.perspective, the.rutledge.perspective on Instagram. And you can click on the link in my bio and it will be linking you to Fireside so that you can join me there. Thank you so much as always for tuning into the podcast. And I really look forward to seeing you on Fireside. Take care. You've been watching The Rutledge Perspective. Thank you for tuning in. If we have given you a different perspective or if you've learned something new that you hadn't thought about before, please subscribe to The Rutledge Perspective podcast where you get your favorite podcasts and give us a like on iTunes or Google Play or Stitcher. We really appreciate it. And your feedback is important as well as we use that to inform our next episodes. You can also head over to my website, laurelrutledge.com, and download a freebie called Where's My Mojo that can really help you get out of your rut or maybe talk you back off that ledge of frustration. You can also find previous episodes of The Rutledge Perspective on laurelrutledge.com. I really appreciate your tuning in. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.